I was just introducing you. <laughs> with a gong? I thought, I thought you could come in with a bang or a gong, oh one or the God. other. Right, Bowie, off you go. Oh, I didn't give you a treat, Bowie. Sorry, I was distracted by the gong. Are you, um, you just, you dressed in a loincloth back there with the gong? Gillian, you know I always do this in a loincloth. What, what, <laughs> I why feel do like you... I'm off centre, am I? I don't know. Which Are you way? off centre? I don't know. I need, I need to be in front of my felting anyway. Am you're, I? You're, you're, you're fine. Am I good for Instagram? Uh, well, you can see from there, can't you? Because you've got little markers on your screen so you can see. Oh, yes, there. I have. Look, I'm wearing my Strathcona jumper. It's you're going to get really hot. I am really hot already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just explaining that I might be, I might look a little dewy. Okay, um, but uh, I have I put a top on underneath just in case I do need to whip this off. Well, do yeah, remember that your microphone's attached to it. Oh yeah, that's true. Actually, I can't. So whip you it off. can't take it. So off. it's twelve degrees today here in the UK and um, feeling a little bit more spring-like. But you know, and actually, to be honest, I wasn't hot in. I didn't put my coat on over the top of it, but I wasn't hot on in this on the way here. Um, it's just in the studio here, it's just with all the lights and all the machinery, it's quite warm. Anyway, um, hello, <laughs> uh, I hope you're all well and um, I, I'm sorry we had a, a week off last weekend, it was Valentine's weekend and I thought, you know, it'd be a lovely, lovely thing to have a week off, a uh, weekend off with my lovely husband who then came down with man flu and thought it was Covid and I didn't think it was COVID. Yes, Everybody, you did. No, everybody, yes, you no, did. no. Anyway, I didn't. went for a COVID test. Wasn't COVID. Then miraculously felt quite a lot better. I'm saying nothing more. Anyway, so Valentine's Day. That was that, wasn't it, Christopher? Uh, yes. And um, but we did have a lovely weekend off apart from that. So you know. Anyway, I hope you all did as well. And um, today I'm going to show you. A little bit more about flat wet felting so I don't want there to be any confusion here this is about flat flowers okay I'm not making 3d flowers as per my book felting fabulous flowers okay that is different my friends today I'm doing flat stuff so I'm doing flowers that you would see perhaps on the front of a cushion or a bag okay like this little clutch bag I've made, or like this bag front that I've made, or there's another little bag I've made, quite a few of those in fact. But I think there's a cushion in the cabinet behind me, uh, over there. Um, so yeah, so this is what I'm gonna show you about how to make romantic, voluminous blooms. That's what it's all about, okay? Feel free to ask questions as I go along. Oh, so I'm covering up my microphone. Feel free to ask questions as I go along. And um, I'm going to be demonstrating mostly how to lay the wool tops out. So it's almost like how to paint with the wool tops. OK, so I'm not going to go through the whole um, process of wet felting. I'm not showing you particularly how to make anything in particular. This is just about how to sort of paint with the wool tops as the final layer on top of the thing that you're making. So I do have other tutorials on here about how to make a 3D bag or cushion, that kind of thing. So this is a really about the final decoration process. OK, so first things first. So the first thing that is absolutely vital is that you have a good palette of colours of wool tops. If you don't know what wool tops are, unspun wool used for felting and used for spinning mostly. OK. Um, but this is basically the stuff that they spin into yarn. So it's spun and spinning. Did I say spinning? Yeah, you I did. did. Um, so it's spun into yarn, obviously, usually on a spinning wheel um, or industrially. OK, but you can see how I'm as I'm twisting it and pulling it and it's like clinging on to itself. It's clever stuff. Well, it's from a sheep. The sheep are the clever ones for growing this wool. 
This is all merino wool, okay, and we sell it in over 70 different colours. So going back to what I was saying, a good palette of colours is vital if you're going to be doing anything like this. It's impossible to do it with just, say, two or three colours. I mean, you can have a good crack, but, you know, you're not really going to get the same effect. Okay, that's the most important thing. And I'm going to talk to you about the, the colour palette that I'm working with today in a minute. And I'm going to talk you through this one as well. Um, next, I want to talk to you about source material. Okay, so whilst it's absolutely fine to just conjure something up out of your head, I do think it's very, very helpful to have something to work from. Okay, so just as an example, when I was doing this, I actually worked from an old cushion, cushion cover that I had at home that I bought many, many years ago that's got some vintage fabric on it. I don't know if, let's just go to the overhead shot actually, and I'm just gonna show you this because I think it's quite interesting for you to see. I'm just gonna move this out of the way a minute. Okay, can we go to the overhead shot please, my love? There we go. Right, so this is my vintage, it's just a panel of the cushion actually, but this is this vintage fabric that I absolutely love this. And I think I love the colours and I don't know what it is I love, I love about it, but I love it. And, and as you can see, or maybe not, <laughs> uh, that way, um, as you can see, I've used some of this, not exactly how it is here, to then turn into this. Okay, so this, if you go back again, Chris, this is kind of the important bit um, to have in front of you when you're, when you're sort of trying to, to felt some sort of floral design. You need some sort of inspiration or a source book of something or other. Now, the other thing that I use quite a lot um, are pictures. And what I want, if any of you have got access to some sort of, I don't know, app, or if you use Photoshop, for example, and you can blur things, that's very helpful as well. So then you could actually use a photograph that you've taken that you like, maybe of some roses or flowers or vase of flowers, whatever. And if you blur it slightly, it will really, really help you turn that into felting, okay? Because you don't want any razor sharp edges. It's impossible to try and recreate that uh, with wet felting. You want everything to seem a little bit blurred and it will help you process what you need to do especially if you feel like you aren't particularly arty or you know you didn't study art and that's not really your thing but you'd like to have a go at this what i recommend you do is go on to google or pinterest and google cross stitch rose chart okay now what this does is it'll bring you up something like this which as you can see or maybe not because i'm holding it at quite a distance actually let's look at it under the overhead camera can we chris please um, what you'll see here is it's split up. It's almost like pixelated into lots of little squares. And this will allow you to really sort of take stock of what it is that you need to get in order to achieve this in wet felting. So it's almost like, if you come back to me a sec, Chris, please. It's almost like you looking at something with your eyes half shut, you know, when you're sort of squinting at something, you can kind of see the bare bones of it but you can't see it in too much detail. That's what you want. It's almost like we're, we're turning this into a watercolour. We're not doing like a fine photorealistic thing. We want to blur it a bit. So you can either use a photo you've got, eyes half shut. You can use a programme like Photoshop or some other graphics programme to blur it for you. Or you can do this, just get, get something like this, print it off from your printer. You know, it's, I mean, watch out for copyright and stuff, but obviously you're not going to use this for cross stitch. You're just going to use it to look at in order to do your wet felting. All right, so I've got a few of these um, printed out here. There's another one. Quite useful because you can see, you know, for example, with this one, You'd need some white, you'd need some pink, you'd need some red, you'd need some bright pink, bright red, you know, a yellow, a white, a pale yellow, and then a couple of different colours of the blue here. And then with this one that I was on originally, you know, I mean, you would need, I would say, three or four different pinks, you'd need three or four different greens, and then you'd need a couple of yellows and a white 
to, to, to work this. And then you can really see about where to put things, where to lay things down. I've got another one here that's even more sort of pixelated into bigger squares. And again, really helpful. So even if you just like stuck this up on the wall of, in front of you when you're working, just to keep glancing up at it and referring to it, really useful. Again, so you probably want three or four different reds and pinks, a white, three or four different greens. And then obviously a background colour that's going to stand apart from the rose or the bloom that you're making. So you can see that the ones I've got here, I tend to go for like greeny bluey backgrounds if I'm doing reds and pinks on top as the colour of the flowers. So really think about a neutral and obviously that my original, um, oops, I don't mean to just destroy that. Um, the original cushion cover that I'd used here, you know, this very, very pale sort of pepperminty green background or sort of a sage green absolutely perfect but if you're going to use this this is our pale yellow olive which is absolutely one of my all-time favorite colors of our wall tops i use this a lot it's in our um <laughs> it's in our vintage vignette kit that's the background color of that one there that you get in that kit love it it's like a really soft yellowy green very nice um, what was I saying? Yeah, so if you're going to use a green as the background, then obviously you need to pick out some different greens to have as your foliage and your stems and that kind of thing that will sort of sit alongside or behind the actual blooms. So really think about your background colours as well. So don't, you know, don't pick a red or a pink is basically what I'm saying if you're doing red and pink flowers. Okay, so there's that. All right. So what I'm going to just talk to you about next is this bag, actually, this little clutch bag. And I'm going to talk to you about the colours that I used um, from our selection, our vast selection. Um, if you could just go to the overhead for me again, Chris, please. Um, so this one I'm working, I worked with uh, the Ice Queen as the background colour. Again, one of my favourite colours. I love these turquoisey colours, but this one is really, really lovely. It's just a, a good sort of midpoint between a turquoise and a sort of peppermint almost. So I've got that ready here to work on to in a, in a minute. But I just want to talk to you about some of the colours here and, and let's just look at my original source material alongside that. So I particularly like this this little design, I think, because it's got a bit of blue, it's got a bit of green, it's got a bit of red, it's got a bit of white, it's got a bit of yellow, it's got a bit of orange. I just, there's a bit of everything in here. So I've kind of translated that into here, but I didn't want it to look like a rainbow. So I haven't made it too sort of obvious. So where I've used the blues here, I've just got the bluebells here in a, in a sort of, I think it's called hyacinth, I can't quite remember the name of it on our site, and the, and the lavender. Then I've got a few different greens here. I've got a sort of a dark olive green. I've got our Christmassy green. I've got our olive and our bright olive greens going on as the greens. Um, then I've used a little bit of uh, flamingo, I think, and coral, like the corally colour in the middle of those little tiny flowers. And you can see that's where they came from originally here. And then here I've used the yellow, I've used the gold, I've used a little bit of peach on the gold as well. Here for this flower, I've used white, then I've used pale pink. And then this cherry red is really invaluable. Use this quite a lot, but it's got a few little dots of the bright red, br our bright red on top. And then I've got the salmon pink here as well. So you can see, just from me talking you through this, you can see, and I've actually used another yellow there as well, I can see. I've used really quite a lot of different colours. Must just, just, let's just talk about my thumbs for a second. Uh, Rosie just um, did some hearts on my thumbs last night. Um, and every time I glance down at them, I sort of think, oh God, have I, have I caught them in the door or something? It's like you've hit them with a hammer or <laughs> yes. something. Anyway, so that's that. So don't be alarmed. I haven't caught my thumbs in the door. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so, so lots and lots of colours here. And, and I just want you to be able to see uh, from the source material how I've used this. Okay, let's move on to actually doing something and me showing you how to do it. So what I've prepared is literally just a background of the ice queen. Okay, and then I've picked out a... I'm actually going to just use... What am I going to use? Uh, and, oh, I'm going to use this. Use Pardon? You're going to use wool. I'm definitely going to use wool. I was going to use this one as my kind of example to work from. So I've got these colours together as well. So I'm just going to talk you through these as well. So firstly, pinks. So the ones that I've picked out for this, I have got the pale pink, okay? And then I've got our salmon pink, okay? And then I've also got 
I think my eyes have gone funny. I think that's our rose pink, but it's meant to be anyway, as the main pinks. But I've also just brought along a little bit of the, our sort of candy pink as well, just to get all options covered on the pinks, okay? Then with the greens, um, I've got a bit of our Christmas racing green. I can't, again, I can't remember what we call it on, on the site. And a bit of grass green. I've got a bit of our olive green, and I've got a bit of our citrus green. So I think that covers all the greens, okay? And then with the yellows, I've got the gold, I've got the soft yellow olive, and I've got white. Oh, and I've also got cherry red, because I thought that might be quite important as well. All right. So, yeah, quite a few different colours there. Just to, you know, you don't necessarily need to use a lot of, of all of them, but it's important to just add bits of colour here and there, which will give it depth and make it look more realistic, if that's what you're going for. All right, so I'm just going to place this under my mat and just ahead of what we're doing. All right, so if we go to the overhead shot, please, Christopher. Okay, you can see then that I'm, am I in the right place? Yes, I think I am. Instagrammers, please shout if you can't see what I'm doing, but I think you probably can. Um, so I've just laid out here a square of the ice queen, okay? Really important that you don't pull the wool tops off to thickly I think I've got lots of videos showing you this okay but when you are laying out your backgrounds for these things you're really pulling off very very wispy amounts of wool let me just lay that over the black there you can see how wispy that is okay so when you're laying this out just make sure that it will felt together nicely now this could be part of your bag it could be part of your cushion front or like me you could just be doing a flat panel that you're going to turn into a little picture that's it okay so we're going to start from the background up so we're going to these are like our little fi finishing touches on the top here what we're going to start with is the basic background of this so for that, I'm going to use a mixture of pale pink and white, okay? Now, what's really important here as well is that we use this wool very, very wispily, all right? So we're just going to get the basic shape of this and we're just going to pull off the fibres really, really finely and just basically get a basic sort of rosy type of shape in the middle here, okay? And then I'm just going to fill in the centre of that just to give us a bit more of a solid colour to work onto. So we're going to work on top of this and keep building it up and keep um, adding bits onto it to mimic what I've got in front of me here, okay? And to be honest with you, I'll probably do the leaves last. So I'm gonna start off just with the main flower to start with. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of white into that. Not a lot but maybe just a little bit here and there. And this won't necessarily be seen actually, but I'm just sort of giving myself some options by adding it in, all right? And what, what, I, what I really want to emphasize here is that you really mustn't use too much wool. So we're not pulling the wool off like this. This is no, no, okay? For those that haven't got the sound on, no. Uh-uh, uh, we need a, a sound effect for that, no. Uh, this is what you want. You want something that's really, really wispy, okay? And this is just going to build this up in a very sort of watercolour -y kind of way, all right? Now, the main colour here, I would say, is probably this one, which is our salmon -y pink colour. I can't remember what it's called online. I think it's called salmon pink. Should look these up before I come on, shouldn't I, so I can yes. tell you accurately. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so I'm just going to now start pulling off much finer pieces, okay? They're still really, really wispy, but I'm just going to, so like, I'm just looking at this area here, for example, okay? I'm just gonna start laying that out like that, okay? And then I'm just gonna bring this round like this. And I'm just gonna add the areas that I think are this color, all right? But I'm going to maybe add slightly more than you would imagine just because I want it to be there when I add other colours on top. So I'm just going to sort of fill in what look like other colours, like here, for example. I'm just going to make that all this colour, and then I'll add that on top in a minute, OK? So, so I'm not leaving gaps for the other bits. I'm sort of allowing for it. <coughs> I, all, the only bits that I want to, to keep without this colour are these much lighter areas and also bear in mind that you can add more on top 
afterwards for these lighter areas. So it's, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work out first time round, OK? Have we got any questions so far, Christopher? Or is, uh, uh, no. No, everyone's being very quiet. Do we have some, some people watching, though? Yeah, there's one or two. One or two. <laughs> All makes it feel worth it. <laughs> There's one or two. It doesn't matter if it's two or <laughs> two million, Gillian. There's somebody watching. Okay, so so you can see I'm just I've just actually sort of subconsciously I've just added a little bit more of the the pale colour in. I don't know why I did that. I wasn't really thinking. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring that round. And and all of the time, keep in mind that this is a round bloom, you know, and it has a centre to it. You want to think about the centre of your flower and keep that in mind. Just Don't just think of it as a completely flat thing, you know. Keep in mind what it is that you're actually doing. And I'm just going to bring some of these bits out like this. But all of the time, I suppose what I want to emphasise to you is that I am pulling off tiny, tiny amounts, right? This is what I'm playing with here. I'm not pulling off great big swathes of it. OK, now I'm just going to move on to a the slightly darker pink, I think. But we want to go easy with this. We don't want to go too crazy with this. So again, really, really small amounts. OK, so really, really tiny, tiny bits like this. All right, really, really wispy. OK, and then I'm just going to play around with that a little bit just add that in like that and I'm just going to curl it round okay and of course you know the other thing to, to keep in mind all the time is that this is going to look a little bit different once it's wet down as well so always keep that in mind as well it's never going to look exactly the same as you've got it when it's when it's dry really going very very easy with this color though because it's quite vibrant and i don't want it to sort of completely take over so you can see i've just got an area in the middle if you need to do a little blobby sort of solid blob just get a tiny bit of wool tops and just bring it around with your heart-shaped thumbs like that okay and i'm just going to pop that just really sort of emphasize the center of the flower there and of course in real life the center of the flower is probably a little bit darker let's just look here at this one okay this will just show it a little bit better on the camera maybe you know how as you're going into the center of the rose you've got a much darker area in here okay and then you've got areas that are darker where the petals are going in the light isn't get quite making it into the si inside of the petal and it's these things that give this all f like more of a three-dimensional feel and make them look more realistic once you've done them okay all right so i'm just going to keep in mind that that's the dark area sort of center of my rose and with that in mind i'm just going to add in uh where is it where is it a little bit of this cherry red there's a few key colours that I go back to time and time again that are really invaluable, in my opinion. Uh, the cherry red is one of them. The soft yellow olive is another one of them. Really useful colours that um, are very good at sort of high lighting, low lighting. The other one is our very, very acid yellow, which whilst you think might not be in this, in this colour palette and in our original colour palette, you sometimes need just that little highlight, that little boost. And sometimes it's really, really great to just add in a little bit of an acidy yellow over the top of a green and it just gives it a punch. Can you see how what's happening here now as well? It's just given it a bit of depth, okay? So I do use this color quite a lot. Look, I've used it here in this, this rose. It's got it just there, all right? Let's grab the original one back here so this is the cherry red here that I've used here and I've used it in the center of that rose there but also just these tiny spots here in this big white rose okay and it just brings you into the center there and just gives you that kind of shading that you need all right so really really important to just use a little bit of that or some a similar color like a dark red in the center there okay then what's interesting here is that we've got the yellow coming in and obviously the white petals so i'm going to go back to the white and really now i'm just adding in some some lighter petals that are sitting on top here i'm going to keep them slightly rounded okay because i want it to look 
like it's a petal coming out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of our gold, another really useful colour, and I'm just going to add the tiniest bit around this. So it's almost like it's catching the light. Or maybe it's a two-tone rose, I don't know. So just, again, it brings it out, brings it forward, okay? Um, and then I think I'm just going to add a little bit more white at the top, going around at the top here. But again, really, really wispy small bits, remember? Not great big bits, okay? And as I'm now putting the white back on top again, can you see how it's just adding in some texture and it's also adding in the lights and, 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 the, and just giving it more depth. That's the word, not texture. It's adding in depth. There, there is a request, Gillian, for mm -hmm. you to, to do this in Spanish. Ah, oh, si, sí. mon amigo. Oh, uh, oh, crikey. <laughs> and there ah, she finished. Ah, the fieltro, <laughs> si. Puesto, puesto, si. Okay, well, maybe another week for that. Do you know what? Every morning I listen, when I'm working out, I listen to crappy Spanish soap operas. Language, Gillian. Sorry. Uh, they do have titles, subtitles, because I'm still, you know, I'm just trying to sort of, in, like, you know, get to grips with it, increase my vocabulary. But once I've finished working out and I've been watching these um, soap operas, well, or, or these dramas, should I say, <coughs> they're not particularly soap operas, they're just sort of quite funny dramas. Um, but then I can launch straight into it. I can really launch into a bit of the old Spanish straight after that. But you've caught me unawares, actually. I, I, I would have had something prepared. I'd have had a... Who's asking, anyway? Is that somebody we know? Or is it actually somebody Spanish? Uh, it's, it's somebody called um, Icali. Oh, it is somebody Spanish. Oh, my goodness. I don't know, yeah. Well, okay. I, you know, if you are Spanish, then I, I really wouldn't recommend me trying to do this in Spanish. If you, Not if that you good. turn If you turn the sound off on Facebook, I think you get subtitles. Ah, maybe you can get subtitles. Good idea. If yes. your language is set to right, Spanish. Right, so can you see how this is now, I'm creating the depth with this by, uh, by adding the, the light areas and the dark areas. Let's add a bit of green in now as well. So again, with the greens, I would start with the dark of the leaf. So I would start with this dark area first. And I'm going to maybe use a mixture of these. Another top tip, if you don't have the exact colour that you want, take a bit of one colour and a bit of another colour. Actually, that is the most crappy bit of that. Let me just get a better bit. There we go. Language, um, so Julian. a bit of that, a bit of this. And then you can kind of hand card them together like this. Do you want to go to the close-up, Chris, actually, please? And, th and then I can just show you this a bit better. So just taking two colours together, let's take some bigger bits. So say we've got this green, okay, and we've got this green. Oops. There are my two different greens, okay. Then if I just keep doing this and just blending them by hand, okay, that's how you do it. You just keep blending keep blending, keep blending, and eventually you'll get... That's amazing. A kind of <laughs> mixture of the two. <laughs> All right, back to the other shot, please, Christopher. Right, so I'm just going to show you, maybe starting with a little bit of this one here, I'm just going to bring this round and sort of make a rough sort of leaf shape with a rough... I, you should never really um, roll the, the felt up, roll the, sorry, roll the wool tops up so that it becomes hard you should just just give it a tiny little twiddle twiddle that's a technical expression is it a technical yeah. sense is it twiddle I'm just gonna tuck, tuck that under there all right just as a starting point okay give yourself a starting point and don't you give yourself too much of a hard time about this really just experiment with what works for you i'm just going to use a little bit of this um i think this is our mid olive that we sell uh, again, a really lovely, lovely green. I love these olivey greens. If the, the bit that you pull off is too long, really just pull it in half. You never use the scissors. Always just pull the wool apart, okay? Because if you use scissors, you'll get hard lines and that is not what we want with felting, okay? So again, just tease this out on top and just use small amounts to get the effect that you're after. So I'm using tiny, tiny, tiny bits of wool here. 
you might want to just highlight one side of it or low light one side of it. Pull that side off, okay. And then I'm just going to add another little slightly lighter bit on this side here using the citrus green, just as an example for you. This is another really useful colour, this citrus green. It's like a real, almost, not, almost like an acid green. It's not, it's not neon, but it's really useful as a colour. So I'm just going to tuck that under there. And can you see how then that just highlights one side of it? Okay, and maybe down the side there. So if you look at the picture, you can see there's a, like a lighter bit at the top there. And that's what, that's what I'm doing. But you know, obviously poetic license, you can turn this into your own thing. And you can see that my rose isn't an exact replica of this. I'm just using it as a guide with colors and shapes and how I want things to sit, yeah? Um, and then I'm probably just going to add a little bit more white into here, but I want to leave it quite bloomy. I want to keep it quite sort of voluminous and I want to keep it quite open and I don't want to get too bogged down with detail because I feel like that's when these roses work the best is when you don't spend too much time faffing about with it and you just give it this kind of overall feel and look. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of the pink and also, just poetic license here, I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny bit of that acid and a tiny, tiny bit of the, of the gold. And I'm actually just going to pop those into the centre. Not very much of it, just a tiny bit of it. Because I want it to look a little bit more like the centre. Okay, so tiny bit there. Okay, and then I'm just going to take a little bit... Oops. There as well. Okay, and then I want to really make that nice and fibrous so it's not too kind of it hasn't got too much detail to it so that's why this is really helpful this kind of pixelated blurred version that you're working from as opposed to something that's really really detailed you know we're not we're not doing that it's like you kind of want an overall feel to it okay you want an overall vibe you don't you don't want to get into the fin finicky details of, of it which is great because it's quicker okay and it will give you a better result I mean if you've got time and you really want to master this do three okay line them up and the first one do it really really quickly uh, without a care in the world don't worry about it you can throw it in the bin it doesn't matter the next one spend a little bit more time on it maybe the half as much time again add half as much detail again and then the last one try as hard as you can felt them all and see which one you like the best at the end you could you could try doing it blindfolded <laughs> yeah that's an idea uh, you could but yeah um see which one you like at the end and see how it helps to be free with this I mean, it's probably the same with painting as well. You know, sometimes when you're relaxed and you let go, you can produce better results than when you're really worrying about it. And, oh, have I got that bit straight? And is that bit right? Anyway, all right. I'm not going to do any more of this now, but what I, what I do want to oh, quickly show you... <laughs> shame. What I do want to quickly show you... Actually, maybe I'll just add a stem because uh, people often ask me about stems. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I, I was slow then. I should have gone with. You were, Christopher. You're not on the ball this morning. Come on. Sorry. All right, stems. I mean, you know, with the stem situation, again, keep it. I'm just going to show you this one. Look, stems, leaves, you know, just be free about it. Just ha These are like just behind the roses. So very much having them on there first. So sometimes I'll lay out a load of stems, lay out some leaves here and there then do the, these roses that I've been showing you on top. Okay, and then I've just added in some little polka dots of blue here. And then with the, with the perhaps I should show you quickly how to do the little blue bell actually, because that's quite nice. Um, just a, let's do a stem and, and a few little blue bells. Okay, but you know, arching stems, keep them quite, um, don't have them polka straight, polka, uh, not polka straight, what's the expression? Poker. Poker, that's it. Polka dot, poke straight. Don't have them poker straight. Have them, you know. And, and actually, the, when, when you start wet felting anything, it's going to go a bit wibbly wobbly anyway. So that's fine. But what I'm saying is, you don't want things poker straight. You do want them to have a little bit of organic 
of an organic vibe. Yes. Soft imagery, as oh. Lynn Harvey says on Facebook. Absolutely. Soft imagery. Soft imagery. All right, so let's just do a little arching bluebell just before I go into how to wet this down and then what might happen. All right. So if we go back to the overhead, please. Por favor, uh, marido. Marido y mujer, see? That's man and wife. I know that because on my... Um, on my rubbishy thing I was watching the other day, they got married. Okay, right, so there we have like a sort of an arching bluebell stem. And what I've done there is I've just taken three different greens, all right, and I've pulled a bit off and then just elongate it, elongate it, add a few different colors together, elongate, okay. You don't want it, you, what, you, what you shouldn't do is twist it like this, okay, you need to have it open, okay, and then we're just, arching it round like that okay then on here let's just do some little bluebells let's use this and this so i think this is called cornflower blue but there's another one i don't think i've got it on the table called hyacinth and then this is what i want the lavender so i'm just going to take a little bit of this and a little bit of this okay just tiny tiny bits is what we want here okay and then i'm literally just going to make them into a little flower just by rolling it just gently with my special heart thumb and then i'm just going to have it hanging like this okay so again oh i've got some bits here a bit of each just to give it like a, a little highlight and a little low light almost so we're just going to have these hanging along the branch not the branch the stem that's the word um where's my other bit gone so a tiny bit of this and a tiny bit of this, okay. And then just a gentle, turning it into a flower, have it hanging down. So that's the kind of effect that you want there, all right? And then obviously just using a tiny bit of this dark, maybe this dark green, just at the bottom of the stem. So think about where the light is. You know, it's going to be a bit darker here at the bottom where the light might, might not be getting to it. So where the, where the leaf is poking out at the bottom, just above the flower, might be a little bit darker, all right? So that's the kind of thing, all right? So come out a sec, Chris. I'm just going to um, show you now how to wet this down and what might happen when you wet it down. Because the act of pouring water on something does change it inevitably. And you need to be able to understand like how to deal with that if it's not quite what you want when that happens. All right, so if you can go back to the, the wide overhead, please, Christopher. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to then cover this up with a piece of netting. Let me just move everything out of the way. Cover this up with a piece of netting. As I mentioned before, I do have this in greater detail on YouTube if you want to um, really look at how you should do this properly. The other thing I would just mention before I start to do this is you can use Angelina, obviously, in your rose as well. So if you wanted to add, actually, let's just grab this one. This one I've got here is called Watermelon. Okay, let's just add a tiny little bit of sparkle into it as well. You don't really need very much of this at all, but I'm just going to add a tiny little bit under some of the fibres and just tuck it in so that the fibres cover it up, but you can still see a little bit of a sparkle if you want to. Okay, so covering it up with a piece of netting, I'm just using our mini mat kit here, which we sell that comes like this. Okay, so if you want a mini mat kit, you get the piece of netting and you get the small bamboo mat. And we also sell a large bamboo mat as well. So that's what I'm using here. The netting goes over the top of the fibres. And then all I'm going to use is some washing up liquid mixed with some lukewarm water. Very green. Maybe I've put slightly too much in. And I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top here and just show you how to completely wet this down. You then need a dishcloth. And you're just going to hold it down and push the water through the fibres until it's all completely wet through. And obviously the act of doing this is going to slightly move and change what's underneath. But gosh, doesn't that look nice? Through the net, you kind of got that lovely blousy romantic bloom that we're after just as I'm wetting it down. So the Blousy? Act Blousy. Is Blousy? That a, yeah. What's that mean? Blousy. I sort of mean, 
it sort of means billowing and and sort of you know like when you're wearing a big blouse okay. and it's kind of it's kind of romantically billowing in the wind. Oh, okay. I think that's kind of what I mean. Anyone? <laughs> this washing up liquid smells of apples. How lovely. It's very odd. Okay, all right, so I'm just going to get that completely wet down. I'm holding it with one hand, I'm using the cloth with the other, and I want to use just enough soapy water until it's completely flat and I've removed all of the air from it. Now you can see that some areas of this have really moved into not quite what I'm after, but actually the way it's dealt with the rows is quite nice because it's made it less kind of rigid and it's, it's made it look more blousy. Where has that word come from this morning? I don't know. So make sure this is all completely wet. Would you be able to write your name in it? And that you can completely write your name in it before you move on. I'm just going to make it slightly wetter over you here. You couldn't, could you? Wait it a wasn't second. Wet Wait a second. Oh, you're the expert, aren't you, Christopher? Hey, I've watched this a couple of times yeah, now. Yeah, you have. So we're just going to get it to the point where you can, as Christopher says, write your name in it. Oh, and Mrs. then Mrs. Mrs. Ruth B says, "Yes, we all know." What blouse means. Oh, okay. Blousy means. Blousy. Overripe yeah. and flamboyant. Oh, there Decadent. We are. Oh, oh well, thank you for that. Oh, I didn't realise I meant all those things. But yes, absolutely. <laughs> right, I'm just going to peel this off now. So make sure it's really soapy before you peel this off. Now, my immediate feeling about this is that obviously the main thing that's screaming at me is that this stem is, is no longer a stem and has turned into a branch and it's just something that's way too fat okay um, and then all my little bluebells have kind of dangled off slightly so I'm just going to move those back so what I'm doing here is literally I'm just using the ends of my fingers to just to, to tease things back I think the dog's snoring if you can hear a weird noise in the background it's not me um, I'm just teasing these things back to to where I want them but what I wanted to just show you with the rose is actually that I'm quite happy with that and I probably wouldn't change much of that the only thing that I might do now is I might just add on a few bits here and there where I feel like it might benefit from having a little bit more color I don't know where but I would probably just mess about with this a little bit more and just maybe just put a few bits on here and there just to change it slightly or make sure that I'm happy with it might just put a tiny bit more of the old red cherry red just in margaret the johnson there. on facebook is saying is the soapy water hot stroke no warm? no you want it lukewarm okay um it, you don't want any extremes of temperature right at the beginning here because you want to do this very slowly this part of the process you want it to felt really slowly um so that you're still in control of it and you can alter it and change it at the beginning here so you don't want if I poured boiling water on this now it all completely sort of uh, start to felt straight away and I might not have much control over over what I can do next so really lukewarm is the way to go okay and it, once you've got the fibers starting to sort of knit together then you can move on to really hot and really cold I suggest actually I don't like that I suggest you watch uh, one of my other YouTube tutorials just about exactly about how to do all of that kind of thing um, and, and then uh, then that will cover that for you. All right, so this is still a little bit thick, actually. But I think I just wanted to explain to you how you can put more bits on, change them, pull bits off that you don't like. Uh, so if, if you decided you didn't like that leaf there, potentially we could move it, okay? And we could put it here or whatever, or we could put it there. You can still lift these fibres up. Actually, I've got it the wrong way around now. Can still lift these fibers up you can still like move them about actually like this just gonna make it slightly more leaf shaped and stick it back like that okay and so on and so forth and then um i could just completely remove this also yeah nobody like that take that away how rude oh no we i love it turn these it into little polka dots instead like this uh any more questions on this before i move on um that you can you're see. being uh, yeah blame the dog hmm, always blame the dog <laughs> yeah.
Can you hear it? You probably can't hear it. I can just hear a gentle snoring in the background. I can just hear this <laughs> sort of noise. Um, and she is. She's just literally Sparko on well, the, the I band. Am, the, I uh, am pre-recorded nowadays, so I rock. could be having a little bit of a doze at the back here. You could... <laughs> Anyway, you get the general idea, okay? So there's lots you can do once it's wet, okay? And once you're happy with it, then you're going to put the net back over the top and you're going to carry on uh, rubbing this for a good sort of 20 minutes, half an hour. Then you're gonna rub the back and then you're gonna do the whole rinsing and rolling process that I do using the bamboo mat. And I'm not gonna go through that now. So if you come back to me a sec, Chris, please. Oh, I, was just, I was just reading a, a message from oh. Coco Exempity. Yes. Pitity. Yes. It says, my dog, Yes. my dogs, yes. multiple, yes. love your voice, lol. <laughs> In what way? Oh, who knows? Are they all snoring as well? Yeah. <laughs> Is this a soporific voice that sends yeah. people off to sleep? Um, quite possibly. I don't know. She's really, really. If I could show you, I would. She's absolutely sparko. And I've got a big. Uh, I've got the crochet rug from my book, obviously. Easy stuff to make with fluff. It's like giant crochet rug. And she's down there. I often actually put it on Instagram before we start and afterwards. I'll, I'll photograph her. And I put it on my Instagram stories. Anyway, so that's really all I'm going to be showing you today about that. What I wanted to emphasize was three things, really. The first thing was that you get some good source material and you find some, some pictures uh, to give you inspiration and to work from. OK, let me get my little my little cushion back here. And it can be it could be a bit of old fabric you've got lying around at home. It could be a cushion you've got. It could be a tablecloth. I used to have a, um, an oilcloth tablecloth actually in the studio and when people came for workshops they would go, oh I quite like the roses on this tablecloth, I think I'll just do those. So it could be a tablecloth, it could be a picture from the internet that you are just using as inspiration, you're not copying it as such. Um, but really find, it could be a photograph you've taken of some roses you've been given, it could be anything, but just find some source material to work from. It could be a vase of roses in real life in front of you. If they're sitting there in real life in front of you, squint, blur them with your eyes. Take your glasses off. Take your glasses off so you can't see them very well. And do just it blindfolded, have turn of, the lights off. No, don't do it blindfolded. But, Why not? Know, just have that kind of um, blurred version of the work that you're working from. Second thing, number two, is to make sure you've got that great palette of colours to work with. Just like you would if you had a watercolour set, the more colours you've got, the better. Or yes, an acrylic Lorraine Howman. set. Lorraine Howman says, I wish I could buy all 70 colours. Yeah, we wish well, you'd buy all 70 <laughs> colours. <laughs> well, you know, get some key ones, okay? We do sell inspiration packs as well, which are quite good. And we also sell... Um, starter packs of lots of colors with 50 grams of each in them instead of 100 which is called cool, cool there's cool colors and there's warm colors i can't quite remember what they're called but you'll see them on our website so a good palette to start with like those we also sell the 25 gram bags where you don't get much of each but it's a good way of just actually for doing things like this if you just need a tiny bit of each color that's a way of building up your palette as well but it's it's vital you know for, and i always say this for anything that you make if it's embroidery, stitching, um, you know, weaving, felting, anything like this. It's so important to have a good palette of colours. And that's why knitters and crochets and people like that and artists always have a stash, okay? And, the, and it's often joked about, but because you've got all of that ready and waiting, it allows you to be so much more creative when you do actually start to work on a piece. So I know it's impossible to get all of the colours sometimes, but you know, get as many as you can, or you know, like you buy one, another friend buys another, go halvesies or whatever. So really good palette of colours is the next thing. And then the final thing that I want to emphasise really is how to use the wool, how to use this wool tops, okay? It's often misused, if you're not used to using it regularly, the temptation is to use way more than you need to. I mean, that on the plus side, if you do spend money on buying all the colours, they do really last for a long time if you're just doing stuff like this because you, you use so little, actually. Um, a bit like, you're, you know, you spend sort of 50 quid on a beautiful watercolour set. It lasts for years unless you're painting every single day, obviously. But, you know, these things are important to have, but you use very little of all these colours each time when you're using them. So I think, yeah, the temptation is to use too much 
when you're when you're wet felting and especially when you're doing something so delicate and blousy and um and you know sort of bloomy um and free you know you don't need much so really watch that i mean i do emphasize that on all my youtube videos that you really don't need to use very much wool tops when you're doing it so make sure that you get a handle on that and you get to grips with that because that's one of the most important things and then obviously when you're actually wet felting it make sure it's rubbed enough that's the other time that people often go wrong and think ah I'm done rubbing. I'm off the rinse. Oh, it's fallen apart. So just make sure that you rub it sufficiently as well when you're uh, actually making the felt. But yeah, really experiment with this. You know, if you're really into it, as I said before, do a, do a sort of a few alongside each other or just one long piece where you try different techniques and just try using less wool and being more free about it. And then you'll maybe get the results you want because I think people find it hard because they um, get too bogged down with it almost, if that makes sense. Anyway, good luck with that. Do I have any more questions about that, Christoph? Um, when you, uh, this is Elaine Townsley, uh, when you lay your base down, do mm. you lay the fibres vertically and horizontally yeah. in, altern in yeah. alternate layers? So what I've laid out here is literally just for a picture okay so when i teach my workshops to do a wet felt picture i always say lay out something as a backing i'm just trying to think i've got yeah here we go so in this instance i've used orange as a backing okay it's it's a color that might come through to the front a little bit so use a color that's going to blend in with what you're doing all right and then you lay out one layer um one way and another layer in the other direction, okay? And then the roses or the flowers or the florals, whatever you're doing, goes on top, okay? So that's for a picture. If you're making a bag or a cushion, you need to go and look at my other YouTube making uh, 3D things, okay? I've got a couple on here, actually, on there. A couple of different videos you can watch. There's a lot of love for your jumper. Oh, I'm so pleased. Honestly, it's so gorgeous. Just in case anyone wants to know, it's the Strathcona jumper pattern. So on our website, search Strathcona. It's a digital pattern that's sent to you as a PDF. We work in conjunction with Ravelry, so the designer gets their cut, okay? <coughs> we actually make hardly any money on it at all, actually, if I'm honest. Very little. Miss Ruth B Pence. said... I knitted the Strathcona, oh. Strathcona jumper this week. Oh. Brilliant pattern. Oh, fantastic. What a and fabulous actually, segue that was, eh? Yes, well done, eh? Christopher. And it's really a quick knit because it's such big needles and fat yarn. Win-win. So this is knitted in our Malabrigio Rasta, if you're interested. It's very hard to get at the moment. I am literally tearing my hair out trying to get it. We've got a little bit left on the website, but not a lot. Hopefully more coming. However, I want a new jumper, Gillian. Gillian, I want a yes, new jumper. Yes, we know. However, you can also knit this in the Mrs. Moon Plump, which is a super chunky. Comes in all the colours, beautiful colours. Also very, very soft, very beautiful yarn. Recommend. Or if that's slightly over your budget, you can also knit it in the Rico Super, Super Chunky. Also comes in very nice colours. It's half acrylic, half wool, so a little bit cheaper. Also very nice. We've got slightly more of those two yarns than we do of the Rasta. But I do recommend it. It's um, a quick knit. It's a lovely pattern. It's quite short, but you could make it longer if you want to. <coughs> and I love the fact that you can kind of blouse up the sleeves, as you can blouse see. Blouse up? Is that if you blousing again? Why am I using that word so much this morning? But it's all, it's it's all real this, wool, though, yeah? This is 100% yeah. wool. Oh. What was that? <laughs> Oh my god. Sorry guys. I just leant on a button, sorry. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got this lovely turtle neck, which uh, and this yarn is so soft, honestly. I'm usually a, a cashmere scarf girl, but this is very soft. Don't mind it straight against my neck. Very good. So yeah, beautiful, hundred percent wool, hand dyed in Uruguay. It's all got this beautiful sort of texture to the colour and so lovely. But also Mrs. Moon and the Rico Super Super Chunky recommend. We're out of the 15 millimetre needles. They're coming in tomorrow. 
Okay, so bear with on that if you're after those. Okay, so that's all about my jumper. <laughs> now, next week... What day be quick, it? you're running out of time. Okay, next week, we're going to be doing Mother's Day or Spring wreaths. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I haven't actually got this finished. We're working on it this afternoon. We should have a, have a pack ready for this this afternoon or by tomorrow anyway. It's either a round or a heart shape that you can do. And I'm going to be showing you how to do... Flo well, hang on, got the wrong one. Floral pom poms, okay. So flower shapes in your floral pom poms. Floral pom poms plus Get all away. other manner of excitement. In, uh, um, and I don't know if you can see this. And I'm going to be showing you wool top tassel to make at the bottom of it. Floral pom poms. And there's going to be all those, uh, lots of other things going on as well. And it's going to be a spring wreath, or it could be for Mother's Day as well, which is on the 14th of March. So join me next Sunday for that. Follow me on social media if you want to know more about that beforehand because you want to get the kit and the pack to make it with me because I'm going to be announcing that later, if not tomorrow. Um, like and follow me, please, on YouTube if you're watching me on here. Subscribe, on there. The subscribe word, that's Gillian. the word. Sorry, subscribe. I'm really useless at all of this. Like and subscribe, or whatever it is, on YouTube, please, because it really helps us. Um, earn about 15 pence a month from it no 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 <laughs> less than that less than that um and it, and if you're watching it on facebook it should sit there uh, interminably as well forevermore so you can re-watch re it on there and then i think we put it onto igtv as well so it'll just be everywhere you can re-watch so um enjoy and 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 hopefully you're all about to go off and, and make lovely sort of voluminous romantic florals florals oh uh, that was the other thing actually if you want a book my book about the best book to get probably uh is uh, complete felt making and it's always best to put the mic put it right on top of the microphone so the best can book to get is complete felt making which will show you the basic process like we were discussing you know what's what's the temperature of the water and you know which way do i lay the wool and what do i do next that's all in here if you want one of my books okay if you want to make actual if you're feeling a bit disappointed because you, you thought i was going to show you how to make actual 3d flowers then you want my book felting fabulous flowers okay because that completely shows you how to do all of that in there and make actual roses that's in there what, actual, roses. actual roses actual and then all other things fluffy related if you like um if you've got lots of wool tops is my other book, Easy Stuff to Make with Fluff, okay, which is all sorts in there as well, wet felting included. Okay, I think that's it. I think I'm going now uh, because we've now got to convert the studio into a photographic studio and do another shoot, uh, including cakes and all sorts of things going on this afternoon with my <laughs> daughter. So that's exciting. And I will see you next Sunday at 11 for spring wreaths and floral pom-poms. Yeah.